Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to the Steaked Cardigan Knit Along. This is lesson one, where you are going to learn everything you need to get started on this very fun pattern. This is the Hidden Pocket Steaked Cardigan by Marley Bird, and it includes everything you have asked for in a knit along. It is made from the top down. It is made in the round. It has raglan shaping with some very subtle cable detail that goes right along the raglan shaping. It also includes pockets with a contrasting color on the inside. The sleeves have thumb holes and the entire thing is made in the round as I mentioned, which means we're going to steak it, which means we're going to cut our sweater to make it into a cardigan. This is a fun project and will take you from a basic knitter to a capital K knitter. The minute you apply scissors to your knitting to purposely cut it in half, I definitely think that turns you into a capital K knitter. By this point, you have the pattern in your possession. So you need to be sure that you are taking a look at that pattern, gather all the materials listed, join me back here and we will get started with how to do the gauge swatch in the round. By this point in your knitting career, you most likely know what a gauge swatch is and why it's important. The gauge swatch tells us how many stitches and rows you get when you are knitting with the needles you are going to use and the yarn you are going to use for your project in a particular pattern. As you take a look down here, you can see I have a basic gauge swatch worked up in stockinette stitch that is turned back and forth. So one row is knit and one row is purl. It's a little bit bigger than four inches by four inches and that's perfectly fine, okay? This is probably what you're used to doing when you do a gauge swatch. However, when we are making something in the round, we have to do a gauge swatch in the round as well. Now you might be thinking, Marley, why do I have to do that? Why does this have to be different? Well, when you knit in the round, it is typical that most knitters will knit a little bit tighter in the round when doing stockinette. And that's because there is an elimination of those purl rows, right? Because when you're in the round, you're just knitting every single round. So when we wanna get our gauge for a sweater in particular, because we wanna make sure it fits, we want to do a gauge swatch that is either 100% in the round or simulates in the round. Because I don't wanna cast on 60 stitches, 70 stitches, 80 stitches, and actually knit something in the round, I like to simulate. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I have a little swatch right here that doesn't look like much yet, right? I cast on 30 stitches. These are the same needles I plan on using for my project. And I'm almost to the end of this row, okay? I'm gonna show you what you would do after you get to the end of the row. So you would cast on your 30 stitches. This would be like I just cast on. You're using circular needles. And what you do is you push those stitches down so they get to the other needle. So now it's as if I'm ready to knit with the first stitch that is a, of that row on the other needle, right? And I will grab my yarn, this is my working yarn, and I'm going to float it across the back of my work. You see those floats right there? I'm floating it across the back of my work and I just let those floats hang out as I go ahead and I knit this row. So that way I'm getting my stockinette stitch fabric because I'm knitting every single row and I didn't turn my work, I still have the right side facing me and this simulates working in the round. The biggest thing when you do this is you'll make your swatch until it's about four by four or a little bit bigger, whatever works for you and then you bind off all of the stitches. Once you have it bound off, you're gonna grab your scissors and you're gonna cut those floats. Yes, you're going to cut the floats. 
The reason you wanna do that is you want your swatch to lay down flat. And right now, these floats are done in such a way that if I try to lay my project down flat, it's not getting a true gauge of my swatch. But once I cut those floats and I can lay it down flat, I'll get a better judgment of what the gauge is. Now another thing you can do if you really want to make sure that you are using the right yarn choice, the right needle choice for your project is wash and block your swatch. You don't know if the yarn you're using is going to maybe tighten up a little bit or loosen up a little bit. And if you're unsure, if you've never worked with this yarn before, giving it a little bit of a wash and a block is not a bad idea. It's better to do that for your gauge swatch before you put all that work into your sweater and not have it fit. So the first thing you're gonna do when it comes to this knit along is work up one of these simulated gauge swatches. Use the larger needle because that's the size we will be using for the body of our sweater. So make sure you get the gauge using that larger needle. Now that you know how to do a gauge swatch, I want you to pinky promise me that you will do a gauge swatch. We're making a sweater and it's important that it fits us at the end. So taking the time to do that gauge swatch is minuscule to the amount of time you will put into a sweater that doesn't fit at the end. So do that gauge swatch. As previously mentioned, this sweater pattern has two different needle sizes. We start off the yoke with the smaller of the two needle sizes and the 16 inch because we start right up here at the neck. So with the number of stitches we are casting on at the neck, the 16 inch circular is the perfect fit. Along with the needles, you need your contrasting color yarn for the cast on. I am going to use the long tail cast on, so you do wanna make sure your tail is long enough to accommodate the number of stitches you need to cast on. If you are unsure how long to do your tail, here is a little trick. For every wrap you do around your needle, count that as one stitch. So wrap your needle for the same number of stitches as you plan on casting on. Once you get that number, so say that was, that was how much it was, I want you to pinch that point and then give yourself a little bit of extra room. It's at this point that you will place your slip knot and this will give you enough tail to get through the whole number of stitches. Now, that's not enough for me in this project, so I am going to guesstimate, which is usually what I do, and you will start off with a slip knot. Now, once you get that slip knot in place, take your needle and place it right into that slip knot. Take the tail yarn and you're gonna put that around your thumb. The working yarn is gonna go around your finger. So the tail yarn goes over the thumb, working yarn goes over the finger. Grab the outside legs, essentially, and you're creating a slingshot here, okay? This slingshot is now in a position to create the long tail cast on. You will position your needle right down here beneath your thumb. So go up your thumb, come over here to the tip of your finger, go down your finger and grab that yarn. Come through the thumb. So you see that there's like a little hole right there. You're gonna come through that hole and come off the thumb and pull it off. Reposition to the slingshot and do it again. Up the thumb down the finger, through the window, off the thumb. You will do this for the number of stitches you need for your yoke. Conveniently, this pattern is written all the way up to a 5X, and each of the sizes are done in a different color until you get to the larger sizes. So if you happen to get lost with the different numbers, so say you're doing a 3X, which is the same color as the 2X, you could always go through and use a highlighter to highlight all the numbers that pertain to you. It's a little tip that I always tell my knitters, feel free to use it if you need the help as well. When you have all of your stitches cast on, it looks a little something like this. Let's go ahead and take care of our tail before we do anything with the stitches on our needle. Hopefully you did not run out of tail and you have a little bit left over. Now, if you're like me, you don't like to cut your tail. You like to keep it in place just in case you need to use it for seaming. So let's go ahead and create a butterfly with our tail and just get it tucked out of the way. Simply take your tail 
and your two fingers here, and you're gonna do like a figure eight around your fingers, okay? Just a figure eight around your fingers. Once you get most of the yarn wrapped up around your fingers like so, take this portion off your fingers, and right here in the center, you're going to take the yarn and wrap right there around the center, creating this butterfly. And do that until you have about, you know, five or six inches left of the tail. You're going to now twist this tail. See how I just twisted it upon itself? Wrap it around one edge of the butterfly and give it a pull. This is now tucked out of the way, but it's still there and useful for us to seam up maybe our facing later if we want to. So it's nice to just have that out of the way. All right, once that is done, I like to go ahead and make sure all of my stitches are on my needle correctly. You've probably read a pattern before. It said at this point, you're gonna join and make sure you haven't twisted your stitches. And so this is exactly what you're doing here. By using the long tail cast on, you have this nice little ridge along all of your cast on stitches. And what you wanna do is make sure that ridge is pointing down from your needles, okay? It's pointing down from your needles. Once you've done that, it's perfect. You can pick up your needles, place the needle with the first stitch or your slip stitch that you had cast on in your left hand. The needle with the yarn attached to it is in your right hand and you're ready to start. You do want to place a stitch marker right here to indicate the start of the round. So I'm gonna grab an orange stitch marker and place it. Now the pattern says that we're supposed to purl one. So I will purl one stitch and then knit 10. So I will knit 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then purl one more stitch and place a marker. I'm gonna use orange once again because these 12 stitches right here that we have just worked, those are our sticking stitches. Throughout the entire cardigan, these 12 stitches will always be purl one, knit 10, purl one. So I like to use the same color marker so that I can identify those stitches right there, okay? Once I've done this, I can carry on with my pattern and I'm gonna do two rounds of knit one, purl one ribbing, ending with the knit one. So I'm gonna do knit one, purl one all the way around. When I get back over here, I'll have one stitch and I'll do a knit one. Once I've done that with um, this color for two rounds, it's time to change to my main color. So by just doing those two rounds in this color, we are creating that nice little colored detail that I like so much about the cardigan. Now, of course, this is where I'm gonna jump in and say, hey, the benefit of doing a knit along with me is that I give you tips and tricks along the way. And I'm gonna let you know, in case you haven't already put this together, if you do not want this accent color up around your neck, you can go ahead and begin with your main color up here for these two rounds instead of working with the contrast color. That's totally up to you, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just get around and work my knit one, purl one ribbing for two rounds. Okay, this is the last stitch of my second round. And it's at this point, I would go ahead and break off my yarn. So I always leave at least four to six inches of a tail. And because we're using the wool, you can just break it apart like that really easily. After you've broken off the color, grab your main color and let's join it into the party. I'm gonna go ahead, because I always do this, I like to tie my new color around my old color, just with a basic, just, just a little tie. I just tie it on to hold it into place and then it just makes it easier for me to work. Once you have your yarn joined, you would work six more rounds, maintaining the 12 stitches in the steek pattern and the knit one, purl one ribbing, all worked in your main body color. After you've done those rounds, you will then switch to a larger needle and you will begin placing your stitch markers for the raglan. 
I'm going to go ahead and work at least one round of ribbing here with this new color so that way I can jump to the larger needles, show you how to do that and how to add those stitch markers. Okay, so we're gonna put our imagination caps on and pretend that I have six rounds of ribbing with my brown color here. And this is where I would jump to what would be called first round on your pattern. And you will grab the larger size of your 16 inch needles. And here's what you do. You go ahead and take that marker and put it over to your new needle. Take the needle that was in your right hand of the smaller size, just kind of pull it up and out of the way. Now I want you to put the larger needle in your right hand and you're going to continue on with the instructions placing the stitches on this larger needle. Now there's a lot that's happening with this round so pay attention to the size you are making. You will start off with those 12 steak stitches just like always so go ahead and get those completed and get over to that marker. Mine happens to be orange, and that's gonna be important because I will be using different colored markers for my different sections coming up. All right, so I have my steak stitches complete, and now it's time to move on, and I am working my large number for this portion right here, and this is the front of my cardigan, and I'm going to knit 11, so I'm just knitting. So knit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. This is my disclaimer. Make sure you're following along with the size you're making. This is the large that I have cast on for. If you're doing a different size, use those numbers. Once you have the number of stitches knit for the left front, you're gonna place another marker. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna, this is actually, actually, you know what, I'm not gonna use red. I'm gonna use purple. So this is a deep purple color and I'm gonna place it right here. And that means that this is the front of my sweater. This indicates that the next few stitches are going to be my raglan area. I'm also going to prep for my cable. So in this area, I will do a purl one. I'm going to knit one and I'm going to make one. So if you pay attention here, you can see that string right there between my stitches. We are going to pick up that string, that horizontal loop lying before the stitches right here. And we're going to pick it up from front to back, place it on our needle, and then we're gonna knit it through that back leg. Okay, I'm gonna knit it through that back leg. Once I've done that, I will knit two. So knit one, knit two, and then purl one, and then place a marker. Now, I'm going to use a different color marker because the stitches between this marker I'm getting ready to place and the next marker I place, those are my sleeve stitches. So let's go ahead, let's grab green. I'm gonna place green right there, okay? If you didn't get that make one, don't worry, we're gonna do it here again, and you're gonna become very familiar with it throughout the increases for this project. I've placed my second, or this would be the second marker of this particular section, right? And I'm going to knit five for me. So one, two, three, four, and five. Those five stitches represent my sleeve, okay? So I will go ahead and I will use my other green. So I know that the, my stitches between my greens are my sleeve. And this is going to be my other raglan area, okay? That I'm going to be setting up here as well. So once again, I will purl one. I will knit one. I'm gonna make one, so once again, I'm gonna grab that horizontal loop or the horizontal line or that string. I'm gonna go from front to back and scoop it up, and then I'm just going to knit it through the back leg, just like so. After you've done that, you will go ahead and you will knit two, so knit one, knit two, and then purl one, and place a marker. Now, do I wanna use a purple marker? 
all right? Because remember, from my orange to my purple, that's my front, okay? From my purple to my green, that's one of my raglan. From my green to my green, that's my sleeve. From my green to my, I am gonna use purple because I, that just makes sense to me, so I'm gonna use purple. The purple there is going to signify these are the back stitches of my cardigan. So I've placed my purple here, and I'm going to knit 31. So one, two, 30. three, 31, okay? So from this purple to this purple, those are my back stitches, okay? So it's like, those are my body. I just know what those are. Now I'm over here and I'm getting ready to prep this side of my raglan. This will be the raglan on the back. I'll have sleeves and then my raglan on the front and then my front. Notice this whole time I'm knitting the stitches off of my smaller needle. They're going onto my larger needle and when this is all said and done, my smaller needle is gonna be complete and I can set it aside. So here we go, we're going to do that increase again. So I'm going to purl one, I'm going to knit one, and I'm going to make one. Some of you might know this as a make one left, and it is a make one left technically, but we will just be using this particular make one throughout, unless you are familiar with how to do a make one left and a make one right and want to change it up, you could do that but the pattern is written to just do the make one left. So I have the purl one, knit one, make one, knit two, purl one, and now I'm gonna have a marker. This is another sleeve, so I'm going to use green. I'm going to knit five stitches. Again, use the numbers that pertain to the size you're making. It's so one, two, three, four, five. I can put my other green right here. That indicates those are my sleeve. I'm over here now, this will be my other raglan. So I'll purl one, knit one, make one. So I'll scoop it up just like so, knit it through the back leg, knit it, and then knit two, purl one. And I'm going to do purple. And then I should just knit to the end. And that will bring me back to the start of my round, which I think my orange marker fell off as I was dangling things around, but that's okay, I can find it and stick it back on there. So I'm at the end, my blue is done as far as my blue needles, so I can set those aside. All of my stitches are now on to my larger needle, my larger green needle. So I didn't have to move anything over and run the risk of losing stitches, okay? I'm gonna just grab another orange marker because I don't know where the other one went. So this would be the start of my, my round. So if you're looking at this, hopefully you can see this well enough to identify what's happening. I'm gonna kind of tilt it like this. So we've got a orange marker and an orange marker. So my stitches between these markers, those are gonna be my steak stitches. Then from this orange marker to the purple, that is my front of my cardigan. From my purple to my green, those stitches there are not going to increase at all. Those stitches are going to be where the cable is created down the raglan. So we've created a nice setup for our cable stitches to happen down our raglan right there. So our stitches are not going to increase inside this purple and inside this green. However, from green to green, that's our sleeve. So obviously we're gonna need more stitches there. So we will have increases inside the green and inside the green. Then from green to purple, again, that's gonna be a raglan. There won't be any increases there. That's where our cable pattern will be. Then we will have increases from the purple to purple, right? We'll have some increases at these purple points because this is the back of our cardigan, right? So we obviously, we wanna have more stitches back there. Then once again, we're over here, we have raglan. Then you have from green to green, that's another sleeve. So we will be increasing there. Then we have raglan where it's green to purple. Nothing's gonna happen there except the cable. And then from purple to orange, right here along this purple edge, we will be increasing there on the front because we want our front to increase over time. Does that help you better see and understand how the stitches are going to 
start to make out an actual sweater pattern. Uh, to me, it does. I like using the different color stitch markers. You can use completely different colors than I do. You could have them all a different color. Whatever works for you to better see or understand where the stitches are, what they are, and what you need to do whenever you see that marker or whatever it may be, okay? So hopefully this helps you a lot. The great thing about having the stitch markers in place now and creating those increases that we did in the raglan area, we have now essentially set up our raglan area for the cables. So as we continue on with the pattern, it's as simple as just following along with the instructions, working the stitches through the, the sticking area that we normally would the way it's written, work over to our stitch marker, and if it's an increase, work our increase before the marker, slip the marker, work our cable pattern, whatever row you happen to be on for that down the raglan, slip the marker, work an increase for the sleeve or not, I mean, depending on what you're doing in the pattern, it's, it's relatively easy, okay? And the great thing about these increases you already know how to do them. You just did them. It's the make one. I just showed you four different times how to do it. Now I am gonna give you a little tip once again because that's the benefit of doing a knit along with me. If these make ones are just a struggle for you, which I understand because some of the larger sizes, you have to do a make one on top of a make one row on top of a make one row for a while and it can feel like it's a little bunched up. If you're somebody who doesn't mind what a knit front and back looks like and you're like, you know what? Instead of a make one, I think I wanna do knit front and backs in that last stitch before the marker or that first stitch after the marker, I'm gonna tell you, go ahead and do that. If you're familiar with knit front and backs and you want to replace the make ones with knit front and backs, go ahead and do that. You have my permission. It's not going to drastically alter the way this sweater fits by any means. It's just gonna change the look ever so slightly, not in a bad way at all. I actually contemplated doing them myself. So you go ahead and you do what's works, what works best for you. Small recap. We know how to cast on with the long tail cast on, put our stitches to work in the round and create our yoke with our contrasting color, then switch them over to our main color. Then we learned how to add stitch markers and we learned how to understand what those stitch markers mean. Along the way, we also learned how to do our make one increase, which we will use throughout the entire yoke of this sweater. So you are nearly there with everything you need to know for the start of this sweater. The last thing really is that cable stitch. Now, if you've never done a cable before, don't let these freak you out. These are probably some of the easiest cables you could ever do. They're a four stitch pattern and we're just gonna take two of the stitches, have them overlap two of the other stitches, and you're gonna have a great looking little stitch pattern right down the raglan edge of your cardigan. Let me show you how to work those cables. Okay, rather than showing you on this, I'm gonna pull in our swatch that we were working with earlier. And I've already set up the same color stitch markers as I placed on my work. So that way you can hopefully kind of see where we are in the pattern, okay? Um, the good news when it comes to cable patterns is you usually only work them every four rounds or every six rounds or whatever it may be. You don't have to do this every round. So make sure you're keeping track of what round you are on. I'm pretending that I'm knitting up to my first marker here, which is my purple, remember? So this would be like, I'm working up to where um, this is the front and I'm working up to my marker. So in the pattern, maybe it says this and it says to do a make one. Let me go ahead and show you to do that one more time. You can see the string right there. You take your left hand needle, you're gonna go underneath that string, scoop it up, and then take your right hand needle, go into the back leg and knit it, okay? That's gonna give you an increase. You'll slip your marker and let's pretend that, hey, now it's time for you to do a cable. So the pattern tells you to purl one and then you have four knit stitches right here. And our ultimate goal here is if this is A, B, C, and D, we want C and D to go in front of A and B. So we're going to use a 
cable needle. So let me get a cable needle here. You can use any type of cable needle you want, whatever works best for you. Grab your cable needle and you're gonna slip A and B as if to purl onto your cable needle. So I slipped them as if to purl onto my cable needle and I'm going to hold those to the back of my project, okay? So I'm holding those to the back of my project. I'm just essentially moving them out of the way. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to knit C and D. So I'll knit C and I'll knit D. Now it's time for me to put A and B back in place. So I can either knit directly off of my cable needle here or I can slip them back onto my left hand needle, which is what I like to do, so I'm going to do that. So now A and B are back in place and I'm ready to knit them. So I make sure my yarn is in back and I knit A and B. That little twist right there that you can barely see, that's your cable. That's all it takes. For your raglan, you'd finish up with the purl one. You'd slip your marker. And if you were working an increase on your sleeve, remember I have green for my sleeve. I would do my increase here. So I take my left hand needle, scoop up that bar, put my right hand needle through the back leg. And if you can't get through the back, you could kind of go around the front and then scoop around to get to the back. Do your make one and then knit to what would be your next sleeve marker and do another make one. But I'm just gonna set this down here. You can see right here, I have stitches right here that are creating this cable. And if you do that every four rounds, you get this really cool cable look all the way along the raglan shaping of your cardigan. Now, I am working at my very own cardigan, my very own sample of this, in a navy blue color, which I know doesn't show very well, but I wanna bring it over so you can see what this looks like as you start advancing along a little bit, okay? Okay, as I mentioned, I know the navy blue is hard to see. That's why I'm not using it as my sample when I'm knitting things up. But I want you to see how this looks as it begins to grow past this yoke uh, collared area, okay? Here is my ribbing all completed. And then you can see right here, this is where my cables begin to take shape along my raglan. I have worked my increases on the outside of my markers down here, right? My increases for my sleeve and for my back or for my fronts. This is my sticking area. So I have increases worked on either side of my cable. For the larger sizes, you will notice that some of these increases are worked one on top of each other for every row or round. So that way you can get to the correct number of stitches we need to make it fit overall. Um, those can be a little bit tricky to create the make one on top of a make one. Um, and if you wanted to change it to a knit front and back, you could, totally up to you. But I wanted to give you an idea of what that looks like. And hopefully you can see that nice little cable detail. It's very subtle but it just goes right down the raglan shaping on the front and the back of the piece. I've kept my markers in place the whole time and you've probably noticed I'm on a longer needle, not a larger needle, a longer needle. So I'm still using the same larger needle that I transferred over to after I finished my ribbing on um, this portion up here. But as my stitches became too cramped up, on this little tiny 16 inch needle, I transferred over to a longer needle. So this one here is actually a 32 inch needle at this point to carry all the stitches. Obviously, I'm not ready to divide for my front and back and armholes yet, but I can talk you through it at this point because our pattern is mainly just stockinette stitch. There isn't a whole lot of stuff going on other than our increases at the points that we have these markers which are super convenient, make it easy for us to remember. The thing is, when it's time to divide for the front, back, and armholes, you will work across all of your steak stitches all the way over to your marker. Once you've done that, you will do a couple of stitches in here where I think you do a knit two together. Let me just confirm this. You'll do a knit two together and a knit one. 
And then you will place the next however many stitches that you need to from the sleeve on a holder. And I would just use scrap yarn. I wouldn't use any of the metal contraptions or anything like that that are available out there for knitters. I would just put them on scrap yarn and set those stitches aside. Once you've done that, you will then do a backwards E cast on or backwards loop cast on. Super simple to do. I'll show you how to do that here in just a second so you are familiar with it. Those cast on stitches are gonna make up essentially this side right here of your new cardigan, right? This is the side portion or the armpit portion of your cardigan. Once you've done that, you will carry on with the instructions, making sure that you have these stitches on your needle, these stitches put on a holder, so that way your sleeves are on holders. You'll cast on stitches over here for your other armpit, and then you'll finish up here to the front. So at that point, you'll have all of these stitches on holders on scrap yarn, and you'll be ready to just work the body of your cardigan, which is what we will do in lesson number two with um, some really easy shaping for the waist and hips if you're interested in doing that and prepping for the pocket. So you have to get all of the yoke done through the separation of the front, back, and sleeves in order to move on to lesson and two. I know that's a lot of knitting for one week, but the good news is you can do it in your time frame that is convenient to you. And when your yoke is ready, come over here. The videos will be waiting for you. The pattern is always here and you'll be ready to move along. Now, because I want to make sure you know how to do that backwards E, it's so simple. Let me just show you how to do it really quickly. Uh, our little swatch is going to come in handy today. I'm going to show you how to do the backwards E cast on as if this was where you wanted to do it. Essentially, you're going to grasp your yarn, wrap it around your thumb, just like you did when you did the long tail cast on. Take your needle and go up the thumb and place that stitch on. Scoop the thumb around, go up the thumb, place that stitch on. Scoop around, go up the thumb, place that stitch on. So I just placed three stitches on there. Now I do wanna note, I do not want you to use this cast on for the start of your cardigan. I don't like the way this looks at the edge of that ribbing, that's why I want you to use the long tail cast on, but this is perfect to use underneath the armpit in the sleeve area. So that is how you do the backwards loop or the backwards E cast on, it's really just that simple, okay? The last thing I want to mention is that you need to be very careful about following along with the numbers that pertain to the size you are making. As you take a look at the pattern, there are sections that give instructions for particular sizes. For example, this set of instructions right here only pertain to the size large to the 5XL. These down here pertain to the extra small to the extra large and the 4XL. Then over here, you only have the extra small and the small. So let's pretend you were making the 4XL. Not only would you follow all of these instructions, but you would follow these instructions. You would skip this and come over here to where it says all sizes. This is important to note because if you do not work in the sections for your size, you could get off track. You could have too many stitches, too few stitches, you know, who knows? So you wanna make sure you're staying on track. Once you get through all of these instructions and divide for the body and sleeves, you are ready for the next lesson. Now I am gonna say this lesson is very information intense. There's a lot of information coming at you and you are just probably like, oh my gosh, this seems like a lot. But I promise you, once you get started and you start working on it, probably about an hour, two hours in, you're gonna get a little bit more confident with it. And then by the time you're five hours in, you're gonna be rocking and rolling. It's gonna be no problem. As you get more and more stitches on your needles, don't forget to transfer over to those longer needles. You don't want them to be all squished up on the shorter needles, okay? Make sure you transfer to the longer needles. And remember, as you start off with the fewer stitches, it's gonna go faster. And as you get down to where you have more and more stitches for the sleeve and the body, it's going to be, whew, it's gonna be a long slog, especially for those of you who are making the larger slices like me. I mean, I, I'm making the 3X and I think I get up to like 400 and some stitches. But 
rest assured by the time you divide for the front and back and the armholes those sleeves are set aside you get back to a manageable number of stitches for the body and it'll be smooth sailing from there last but not least when you're working on this please share with us on social media use hashtag marley bird or hashtag yarnspirations because we love to see your work in progress and i particularly love to smash your like button okay that's it for me everybody I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.